previous video we were discussing about fifth and second law of motion and related problems and today here we will discuss about newton's third law of motion okay. newton's third law of
an object is there, its mass is number. It is exerting a force on another object having mass. Okay. So this force we can write it as force acting on second object. According to Newton's theorem, what happens? The second object will exert equal and opposite force on first object. So second object is exerting. Force on first object. That's why we are writing it as F one two. Force acting on first object due to second object. So if you are considering the first object only M one, how many forces are acting? Only one force is acting. What is that force? That is F one. If you are considering that mass M two alone, how many forces are acting? Only one force that is. But if you consider it as a closed system, in that case, what happens? The force will be. Okay, is it clear? So we can say that action and reaction cannot cancel each other. Action and reaction cannot cancel each other. The force they are acting on. Different objects. This is very much important. They are acting on different objects. They are not acting on the same object. If they are acting on the same object, we can say that net force is zero. So, if you consider this case, if only we are considering first object, only one force is acting, that is F one two. If you consider the second object again, only one force is acting, that is F two one. So, we can say that action and reaction. Even though they are equal in magnitude and opposite in direction, but they are acting on different objects. They are acting on different objects, and hence they cannot cancel each other. Okay, is it clear? I think all of you understood. Now, what is meant by Newton's theorem? Okay, very simple. For every action, there is always an equal and opposite direction. Okay. And now we will discuss about law of conservation of momentum. Law of conservation of momentum. Okay. Conservation of energy. You have to hear. You have studied about law of conservation of mass. So here we will discuss. We are going to discuss what is meant by law of conservation of momentum. The statement, everything we will discuss. Okay. So for that we are considering two objects. First object is having mass m one. It is moving with a velocity m one. And another object is the mass m two. Moving with the velocity. Okay, both are moving in straight line. And if u one is greater than u two, no doubt it will collide. No? Okay, it will collide. Why it will collide? Because if u one velocity is greater than u two velocity. Okay, so before collision, u one and u two are their velocities. So this we can write before collision. Before collision. Now what happens? Both are moving in straight line. So second object, first object is colliding with second object. So what happens? That we can show. Yes. M one is there. M two is there. So this is the situation during collision. During collision. So in this case, we can say that M one. The exert force on M two that we can write it as F two one, and second object will exert force on first object that we can write it as F one. Okay, is it clear? So this is the case during collision. Now next case we will discuss what it is after collision. So after collision we are considering. These two 
two objects. M1, it is moving with a velocity B1 and M2 is moving with a velocity B. Okay. After collision, because of the force, their velocities have changed to B1 and B. Okay. And this collision takes place for a small interval of time. T is the time taken for collision. During a small interval of time T, that collision is taking place. Okay. Is it clear? So now we will discuss how to obtain law of conservation. This we are obtaining from Newton's third law of motion. Okay? That is to every action there is always an equal and opposite reaction. So we can write according to Newton's third law. According to Newton's third law. F12 is equal to minus F21. Why we are writing F12 is equal to minus F21? Because both forces are equal in magnitude but direction is opposite. That's why we are writing F12 is equal to minus F21. Okay. Now, what is F12? By using Newton's second law of motion, we can write force is equal to mass into acceleration. So we can write M1 into A1 is equal to minus M2 into A2. Why it is M1? Because it is the force acting on first object. So we can write it as mass of first object into acceleration of first object equal to minus M2 A2 mass of second object into acceleration of second object. Okay. Now acceleration can be written as rate of change of velocity. No. So we can write m1 into v1 minus u1 divided by t. Same way we can write here minus m2 into v2 minus u2 divided by t. m1 into v1 minus u1 by t is equal to minus m2 into v2 minus u2 by t. Why both became t? Because for the same time duration the forces are acting. So time duration will be t. Okay. So this t can be t. Okay. Now what we can write? We can remove the brackets. So what we will get? M1 V1 minus M1 U1 is equal to minus M2 V2 plus M2 
Again, we can write it as momentum of second object with rotation. Momentum of second object before collision. Or this we can write it as momentum of first object after collision plus momentum of second object after collision we can write total momentum after collision. Total momentum after collision is equal to this we can write it as total momentum before collision. Total momentum after collision is equal to total momentum before collision and that is known as law of conservation of momentum. So we can say that law of conservation of momentum says that during any collision the total momentum after collision is equal to total momentum before collision. That is known as law of conservation of momentum. Okay. So according to law of conservation of momentum, the total momentum before collision and total momentum after collision should be equal. Okay, is it clear? Understood? No? Any doubt? Okay, and now, now we will discuss about the recoil of it. Recoil of it. What is meant by recoil? Recoil means the movement of the gun in backward direction when a bullet is fired that is known as recoil of gun. So if a bullet is fired from a gun, the gun, bullet will move in forward direction. So what happens? Gun is exerting a force on the bullet in forward direction and bullet is exerting equal and opposite force on the gun in backward direction because of which the gun moves in backward direction and that is known as law of, sorry, that is known as recoil of gun. Okay, so the movement of the gun in backward direction when a bullet is fired is known as recoil of gun. That's why normally those who are uh, firing the bullet from the gun, they normally used to keep on the shoulder and they will not hold near to their chest. Why? Because if, if they are keeping on the shoulder, if, when the bullet is fired, that gun will move backward. It will not uh, give any injury to the person who is holding the gun. But if it is kept in front of the chest, what happens? When the bullet is fired from the gun, the gun moves backward. It will hit, cause injury to the person who is holding the gun. Okay. So here we are considering. This is our gun. Okay. Our gun is there. And from this, we are firing M. So let M is the mass of the bullet. M is the mass of the gun. And let small m is the mass of the bullet. And let capital B is the velocity of the gun. And small b is the velocity of the gun. According to 
लॉ ऑफ कंसर्वेशन ऑफ मोमेंटम दिया लिखा है राइट टोटल मोमेंटम बिफोर फायरिंग द बुलेट इज इक्वल टू टोटल मोमेंटम आफ्टर फायरिंग द बुलेट टोटल मोमेंटम आफ्टर फायरिंग द बुलेट What is the total momentum before firing the bullet? Both gun and bullet were at rest. No, both were at rest. So before firing, total momentum is zero. Now after firing, what is the momentum? Their mass and velocity is equal. So mass of the gun into velocity of the gun plus mass of the bullet into velocity of the bullet. Okay. Now what we have? We can find the velocity of the gun. So we can write m into b is equal to minus m b. This we are taking here and this we are taking to this side. It will become minus m b. Cos b is equal to minus m into b divided by. And this negative sign shows that the gun is moving in opposite direction to the that of the bullet. So this velocity is known as Recoil velocity. Recoil velocity of the okay. Recoil velocity of the gun. Is it clear? Understood. No. So what is meant by recoil of gun and how we can find an expression for the recoil velocity of the gun? I think all of you understood it. No. Any doubt? Okay. Now we will discuss one or two problems based on law of conservation of momentum and recoil velocity. So we will discuss some problems related to recoil of gun and the collision problem. Okay. So first of all, we will discuss some problems related to recoil of gun. A bullet of mass twenty gram is fired. The velocity of one fifty meter per second from a pistol of mass from a pistol of two kg. Calculate the Recoil velocity calculate the recoil velocity of this pistol. Calculate the recoil velocity of this. So what it is given? Mass of the bullet is given twenty gram. It should be converted into kilogram. So twenty by thousand kilogram, or you can write it as two into ten raised to minus two kilogram. Hundred can be written as ten raised to two, and if it goes to numerator, it will become ten raised to minus two. So you can write it as two into ten raised to minus two kilogram. Now what is given? Velocity of the bullet is given one fifty meter per second. Mass of the gun is given two kilogram. Now velocity of the recoil velocity is given. So you know the expression for recoil velocity. Velocity is given by minus m into b divided by. So minus mass of the bullet is two into ten raised to minus two. The velocity is 150 divided by mass of the gun is 2. What do you get? 150 into 10 to 
is minus 4 that can be as minus 1.5 integers. And this negative sign shows that this one is moving in opposite direction. Of so if you want, you can write 150 to the minus 2 meter per second itself, you can write it as, or you can simplify it as minus 1.5 meter per second. Okay, is it clear? Now we will discuss the next problem.
down moving with the velocity of two meters after the collision after the collision the first object moves with the velocity of three meter per second let's calculate calculate the velocity of the second object And assume that all are moving in straight lines. Assume that the objects are moving in straight lines. Moving in straight lines. Okay. So here we have a plane of conservation of momentum. No. Because initial mass is given, initial velocity is given, final velocity of one object is given, second object is given. So you can write m one is given, hundred gram. So that can be written as hundred by thousand. No, hundred by thousand kilogram. So you can write it as hundred into ten to the two minus three. Again, m two is given, two hundred gram. So that can be written as two hundred into ten raised to minus three. Then u one is given four meter per second. U two is given what it is two meter per second. No, u two is two meter per second. And b one is given three meter per second. And you have to find. Okay, so you can apply law of conservation of momentum. According to law of conservation of momentum, you can write m one u one plus m two u two is equal to m one u one plus m two. Okay, now what you have to find? You have to find. V two, no M two, V V two you have to find. So you can write M one U one plus M two U two minus M one U one is equal to M two. For those data you can substitute it. M one is V one hundred. Hundred is two ten raised to minus three. U one is V one four. M two is given two hundred into ten raised to minus three. U two what is the value of U two? U two is two minus M one again hundred into ten raised to minus three into three which is equal to two hundred into ten raised to minus three into two. U two is two. Okay, and now. Ten raised to minus three can be by every term ten raised to minus three. So you may think that why we have to control because whenever you are solving problems, that should be represented in this cell. Okay, so that you can control that. Now what we have to do? Can you know zero? Here zero can be cancelled. Here zero can be cancelled. Here also zero can be cancelled. Now here what we are getting four. Plus two minus three is equal to two b. Four plus two is six. Six minus three is three. So two b two is equal to three. Or b two is equal to three by two is equal to one by one by one by one. So this is the velocity of the second object.
Okay. Here for simplification, I cancel 100. Also, if you find difficulty, you can write 100 plus. Here 2 into 2 is this. No, okay. Here, here one direction is there. No. Here, that is 4 plus here 2 into 2 is there. That is 4 minus 3 is equal to 2 into 4. You can write 8 minus 3 is equal to 2 into 8 minus 3 is 5. So 2 into 2 is equal to 5. 4 into 2 is equal to 5 by 2 which is equal to 2.5 by 2. Here, 2 into 2 is equal to so you get the answer as 2.5 or if you want you can write it as 400 plus 400 minus 300 is equal to 200 between that way so again there also 100 will get less okay so this is this is the way of solving problems related to law of conservation of momentum and required velocity of okay is it clear to everyone i hope all of you understood it